How's it going today? Today we're going to talk about a question that I get a lot. I, I've I've seen a lot of the stocks I've recommended are up massively. I mean, they've done well. And I get a lot of these questions. Should I buy the dip? Should I wait for the dip? And uh, make sure you like and subscribe. I could talk more about this um, and more of these stocks. But I like to talk about because really a lot of them have went up a lot over the last couple months. And first, you have to always think, where has the stocks been relatively to where it's at? Because a lot of these stocks went down a lot so they went up a lot so they really just kind of almost breaking even but some of them went up even more and everybody's asking me should i buy now should i wait should i do this and i, I get a lot of these questions should i buy should i wait for the dip the answer to that question has to depend on one other question is it a good company because is it a good company it applies to a lot because if it's a good company if the answer is yes buy it you know that that is the honest answer. I've I've done this a lot over the years, and when I bought, I could tell you a story, and I could probably explain it the most. When I looked at Nvidia, when I purchased Nvidia, way back in 2015, right? You know, I purchased Nvidia. I was at twenty dollars a share. I, I wasn't making YouTube jury. I wish I was, but <laughs> I was had my blog and then stuff like that where I talk about it on my Facebook page. But anyway, bottom line is. I, I wasn't really that open about it. But anyway, bottom line, I p purchased it at 20. And a lot of people were saying, hey, it went from 20 to 50. You know, and that was a massive gain. That was a massive gain. You know, 20 to 50, that's over 150% gain. So everybody's like, should I buy now? Should I wait for the dip? Well, you know, when <laughs> okay, let's say you, I said, and you stuck with this philosophy, is it a good company? You would have bought and not wait for a dip. And let's say then it went up to 100 then it went up to a hundred. That's another. That's another two x gain from that rich, from the original investment. That's a five times. So then let's say another. You know, do I buy? It? Then you ask the question again. Do I buy the dip or should I wait? Then it went up to two hundred, and you're like, well, you know, I really missed the boat on that. I should have bought a fifty. I should have bought a hundred, but I didn't. I'm just gonna wait for the dip. And really, on these companies, a lot of these good companies, you don't get a big, big, massive dip. I mean, maybe a 10%, maybe a 20%, maybe when the rocket, the market corrects, but normally these are the, they're, they hit fast and they go right back up. So if you're not right there, I mean, just like these, a lot of these stocks, a lot of people missed the dip. They missed it. They didn't have enough capital. They didn't have this. They didn't react fast enough. The stock just went boom, then right back up. You know, and that's kind of how it is with these, a lot of these stocks. They don't stay down long. So, I mean, if you wait for the dip and like, Let's just keep going with this this uh, story with Nvidia. That's a two. That's ten times from the gain. So you're thinking, oh, I can't go any higher. It's at two hundred. But guess what it did? It went to two hundred and sixty, and two hundred and eighty, and two hundred and ninety, all the way up to two hundred ninety. And then it dipped. And when it dipped, it went back down to two hundred. So if you would have, let's say, the original person said, "Should I wait for the dip at 50? He's still waiting for that dip, you know? And let's say he bought it at 100. He's still waiting for that dip. And let's say he's bought it at 200. Now it's at 360. Well, he might have got the dip, but let's say he did, because NVIDIA, because at the time, NVIDIA was going for a lot of problems. And, you know, so, you know, do you, what do you do there? You know, I mean, it always looks easy back when you look at, at where it was and where it is, but you, when you got that chart, and the stock price is at 160 today. Is it a dip or is it a buying opportunity? So essentially, you always have to ask the question: Is it a good company? Because you would have bought every single time, and you've been right. But let's say you bought the dip, and there's a lot of companies that dipped. Well, I could give you a lot of names. Ford dipped. Well, you should buy the dip on Ford. Well, is it a good company? Uh, you know, I mean, that's debatable. GM, you know, that stock dipped. Kraft Heinz dipped. Well, that stock's been dipping for years. J.C. Penney's right at bottom on the dip. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you look back through Shopify. Shopify was the only one. I'm gonna wait for the. I'm gonna wait for this thing to pull back. Well, that's starting. You know, say you bought it at two at two hundred, at twenty. Well, I'll go wait for the dip. It went to hundred. Well, I'll go wait for the dip. It, it'll pull back. Now it's at eight hundred. What are you gonna do? Wait for the now dip. So I'm just saying, you know, don't try to time the market. With a 20%, maybe a 10%. Now, if there's a correction, which, I mean, you've been waiting a very long time for that. And let's say, you know, I mean, the market's at 3000 When I first got into the market it, <coughs> back in 2013, 
And the market was at 1,500. Around there. And people saying, I'll go wait for the dip. Well, when was the dip? You know what I mean? You're still waiting, I guess. Yeah, I guess they're just sitting on on stockpiles of money because then it went to 2,000. Then it went to 2,500. And it, it dipped a little bit. I mean, a lot of these times, every single time they dip, wow, it's going in a recession now. In 2018, everybody was like, well, it's in a recession. We're going in a recession. The Fed is tight and too aggressive. In 2016, it was Brexit. Oh, well, that was it. Uh, you know, we're in a recession. 2017, Trump's going to win the election. Recession. Well, they were wrong there. And they were wrong again. You know, I mean, these people that, that sit around and wait for the dip, you're doing yourself a disservice. Because let's say, like I said, with Kraft Heinz, is it a good company? Let's say you don't ask that question. Well, it dipped. The stock ran up a little bit. Now it's dipped down 20%. Should I buy? Let's say you bought it. Well, then it just keeps dipping. Then you're down 50. Well, I got to keep adding to it. I can keep buying the dip. And there it goes. Just It goes from, from down 20, down 30, down 50, down 75. You know what I mean? Do I get out now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then I watch the trade desk go from 100 to all the way up to whatever it is at now, 400 or 300 or whatever it is at now. So, I mean, you'd be, you know, so in my opinion, I always buy it. Now, the only time everybody's asking, well, your question is, are you buying the trade desk? Are you buying these stocks? And some of these stocks I am buying, but the thing is with mine is I don't like to over allocate. If once I hit around 10, 20% in my <clears throat> portfolio, because that's what happened to NVIDIA. Did I sell it? Yeah. I just set, I cut back my position because it was sitting at, I didn't think it would go up as much as it did. And I allocated 10, it was about six, seven percent of my whole portfolio into it, and then it went up 15 times. And the other stocks didn't go up that as much, obviously. I mean, NVIDIA's went up massively. So, did I cut back on that position? Yeah, I did because it was almost 40, 50. It was, I think it was almost 40, 35 percent of my portfolio. So, if that stock would have got hammered, that whole portfolio would have got hammered too. So essentially, it's a, it's almost an allocation issue, a portfolio management type decision versus. You know, but I'm not selling it. I'm not shorting it. <laughs> you know, I think it, it will. So that's the question you got to ask yourself. You ask that question, is it a good company? Just like Adobe. I made the mistake on Adobe. I, I was waiting for that dip. I was I, I always thought, you know, because that's kind of how kind of amateur new investors kind of think about the market. Well, I'm going to wait for the dip. It's going to pull back. And you just sit there and wait and wait. And wait, you know what I mean? And you'd be waiting a long time on the, some of these stocks. I mean, you know, you'd be waiting. If you wait for the market to get back down to 1,500 levels in 2013 when people wait for a dip, you'd be waiting a long time, you know? Because even then, the market went up to 2,000. Then it dipped, but it only dipped 10%. So it went from 2,000 down to 1,800. So if you would have put you still up, if you would have bought that original amount. You know, so I, I just see that a lot of times with people. They just kind of wait for these dips that never really happen. Or when they do, it's not as bad as they thought. It's it, 10% dip. A 10, 20% dip. But if you watch the stock tripled or doubled from that, you know, I mean, just like Shopify. When I recommend Shopify first on my channel, it was hitting all-time hot. It was at 200, I think 250, 240. Now it's at 800. So if I was like, well, I'm going to wait for the dip, and then you didn't get one. The trade desk, when I originally recommended the trade desk all the way back in April of 2018 uh, or 2019 on this channel, it was at 200 and it just had a blowout quarter. That's why I recommended it for the for the thing for on my channel. I was like, I got to get on this one, you know, because this thing is growing massively. It just blew out the quarter. It was up 40 percent, I think, for the week. And I recommended it then, you know, and then the stock just kept going up because I asked myself, is it a good company? Well, normally good companies grow. Good companies do well. So ask yourself that question. Now, I'm not saying throw all your money at it because <clears throat> you always can add later. Maybe if it dips a little bit, if you feel more comfortable, then do that. But you won't, uh, a lot of these companies, you don't get these big, massive dips very often. And I think it's very foolish and not very educated just to wait for the dip because you might be, it might dip, it may not. And I don't, I don't play that game of waiting for the dip. That's just not my investment strategy. I don't try to time the market, especially on my long-term portfolio, my growth-oriented portfolio that I share on this channel. Um, I just don't. So that's my opinion about should I wait for the dip? I would not wait, wait it. I guess you can buy in halves, you know, half the position now and half later. I do that a lot. Um, <clears throat> just because it makes it easier for me, then I just kind of, 
buy it. But the majority of the time, I wish so many times, I wish I would just bought it all at once and I would have probably made even more money, especially if it's a great company. I did the thing with Skywork Solution when I saw it and I, I bought it at 60. Now it's at 120, but I only bought half my position. Then I watched it all the way up to go up to 100. And then I added to it and I missed that dip. If I was going to go lower and whatever, <clears throat> when I should have just put all my all my eggs in one basket. And just like the thing with uh, the data dog now, I recommend it at 40. Bought it, I was buying it at 40. It went up to 60 and I was like, well, I could pull back. And it never did. Now it's up at 80. So I, I've made the same mistakes too. And I've, I've always lost when I sit back, go, well, I go wait for the dip. Every single time I've lost money on it, really. I mean, not not actual money, but really uh, potential, I, I guess, to make money on it. So that's my opinion. I always, I don't wait for the dip. If I really strongly believe in the company, I could just buy it because my thinking is in three years from now or five years from now, it will be a bigger company. So I may not, I might take a small hit in the beginning. I might get a, a pullback, but then the buyers will always come back for great, great companies. They always have, and they always will. And that's all I got to say. Make sure you leave a comment if you got burned waiting for a dip or whatever and just watch the stock go up and up and up and up. Anyway, that's all I got to say for this video. And hopefully it helps you talk about these stocks have went up a lot. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.